Ah, what beautiful weather we're having. Hmm. Do you smell... Smells like... Oh, no! No, 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 no. My house, my house is on fire. No, how did this happen? Call the fire ambulances. Call the ambulance fires. Call the fire brigade. Welcome back everybody to another episode of Minecraft The Journey with me, Bugman CX. And I know what you're thinking. What is going on here? What are all of these things? You said your house was on fire. What's going on? Well, I'm here to explain it all to you. You see, as I was reading over the feature list of Minecraft Beta 1.2, I discovered one change that took me by surprise. It said that in Beta 1.2, an unused second backup fire texture was added into the game's texture files. And I thought, what? A second backup texture? I didn't even know there was a first backup fire texture. So let's have a quick recap about the history of Minecraft's fire within the game, so that we get a better sense of what's going on. Fire's been in the game for a fairly long time now. It was first added in InDev 2010-01-09, but it was implemented differently to other normal blocks within the game because the fire texture was a looping animation, quite different to anything that had been done before. The fire's code and the graphics were buried somewhere deep within the game code, so it wasn't possible to pull out the textures or change them in a texture pack like you could do with other blocks or item textures. As we've seen throughout this series, the game went through significant rewrites during its InfDev era, and most features got removed and then re-implemented during this period. Fire was one of the features that seemed to stay constant in the game, and it was still in place in the early InfDev versions and behaved and rendered in the same way. In the second release of InfDev 2010-06-17, a backup texture for Fire was added to the game's main texture file, and this weird looking texture is that original backup Fire texture. During this time, Notch had been making some changes to improve the world generation, and one of the changes made was some performance fixes for liquids and fire, and the way that they were rendered, so this texture was added to the game just in case that main fire animation failed to load. But this particular backup fire texture didn't last for very long. Just one week later, in InfDev 2010-06-24, the backup fire texture was changed, and I'm not sure why. There isn't very much information about it that I could find. The newer texture was a square-shaped texture, which read Firetex HNST, which means fire texture, honest. Now in beta 1.2, and again for reasons I can't explain, a second identical backup fire texture has been added to the game's main texture file. Perhaps there were some other fire-related changes planned or going on under the hood in beta 1.2, I don't know. There are a few tweaks to fire behaviour coming up in beta 1.2 underscore 02, so maybe it has something to do with that. But there are all sorts of things like this that I discover through research and video comments and feedback through my Discord. Many of you watching who all know the game so well probably knew a lot of this already, but for me, I'm making new discoveries all the time. So I want to have a closer look at these fire textures. I've got three different fire textures which I'd like to take a look at in different ways. First of all, I've got the regular Minecraft fire texture. I just love this thing. Now, you're normally not allowed to have this in survival Minecraft, but I've put it into my inventory so that we can just have a bit of fun with it and have a closer look at it. And we've seen this before as well, because this was available just like this in Minecraft InDev. And I think that this is a fantastic texture because I don't think there's anything else like this in the game where you can just hold an animated texture like this and to me it looks like my hands burning on fire and I think it's just amazing. The second texture I've got is the original backup fire texture and look at this thing. What is that? Does it even look like fire? I don't know. It's a bit of a mess this one. I think it looks like mm, a giant lollipop or a huge buttercup mushroom or something? I don't know. I imagine that this texture was never actually expected to be seen 
by anyone. So they developers or Notch, whoever made it, didn't really care what it looked like, just as long as it was something. And the third one is the second backup fire texture, which is this one, the one that says fire text honest. And this is in reverse to you right now from what you can see, but uh, I can read right through it. It says fire text honest. This looks a bit like a stencil, I suppose, because it's got the lettering we can see through all the gaps and everything. Hmm, very interesting indeed. So let's have a look at what some of these look like placed on the ground. Well, first we have regular fire, and I think everybody knows what regular fire looks like. It's going to burn out, of course, because that's what fire does, but it's what we expect to see, so got to be happy with that. The second one, of course, is this one, the original backup fire texture. It is popping off the ground because I have retextured some mushrooms and they don't like the sunlight. That's how I've done this. I've just taken the texture of the backup fire and overlaid it on the texture where the mushrooms would be. So you get a good idea of what it looks like as an item entity and also as a placed object. But yeah, I don't know. It's not looking that great to me. I also can't be sure that it was intended to look this way because if you look at the original fire texture, excuse me cow, you do not want to be around this. The original fire texture is actually made up of four sequences of the same animation, one on each side, and then in the middle, if I, if I hop up here and we can look down, there's actually two going crisscross like this as well in the middle of the block. So it is quite possible that this texture here was supposed to be rendered in the same way. But we're just seeing it in a crisscross pattern because if you place down a mushroom, that's exactly how they appear on the ground. Just like saplings as well, they're, uh, they're rendered in exactly the same way. So let's have a look at the other fire texture, shall we? This one is a little bit bigger. And there you go. You can read the text if I line it up perfectly. It does say fire text honest. And yeah, this one not very fiery i mean maybe this one looks a bit more like fire i don't know i don't know but whatever it is it's strange how does this one look in its item form yeah this one looks a bit more logical and you can actually read the text when it's floating there on the ground let's have a look at this another way if i set this tree on fire you'll see that the flames when they reach the sides of blocks they only show that side flame texture. That tree is burning fast, but perhaps there's a way we can use this to have a look at how those textures might have looked if a tree was on fire. But I've run out of tree. Let's wind this back and try again. Wait, that's perfect. Okay, now, what if we replace all of these fires with the first backup fire texture? Well, that's definitely interesting, isn't it? This kind of gives an idea of what these backup fire textures might have looked like if the tree had caught fire, but the animation hadn't worked. Hmm. Very, very static and still doesn't really look like fire, if you ask me. But I wonder what it would have looked like with the secondary backup fire texture. Well, definitely different. <laughs> it looks like uh, it looks like this is signage more than it is actual flames, but but again, this is just indicative of what these textures might have looked like if they hadn't loaded in. I can't know for sure. This is just my approximation. Hold on, we have got to try this. Take one bowl, apply original backup fire texture, secondary backup fire texture, and oh boy. This is gonna be some spicy stew, but I'm ready for it. Okay, three, two, one. Ooh. Hmm, not bad. No, burn. Oh, 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 Older than I expected. I'm here in a fresh multiplayer world because I want to talk about the phenomenon known as flying squid. Yes, flying squid was something that hundreds of players experienced in multiplayer Minecraft after the squid were introduced in beta 1.2. 
Of course, this wasn't their intended behavior, but in multiplayer mode, server lag and desynchronization between client and server would often cause unexpected side effects when playing in multiplayer servers. Soon after Beta 1.2 was released, hundreds of users started randomly experiencing these flying squid in their world, and soon enough, people were posting screenshots and videos of this to YouTube and various forums. Even if it wasn't an intended feature, players embraced it and accepted the flying squid as just part of Minecraft. There's even official merchandise for the flying squid, that's how much loved they are. So technically speaking, when the squid are gliding around underwater, they're technically flying, but that's only supposed to happen in the water. Jeb commented on why the flying squid bug happens, and he said, Essentially, the squid was moved by a velocity vector. When it hit the surface of the water, it stopped. At least, that's what's meant to happen, and it did on the server side. Unfortunately, the game didn't update the velocity on the client side, so the client thought that the squid would just continue at that speed up into the air. But unfortunately for me, I've been wandering around on multiplayer servers now for several hours trying to encounter a flying squid, and sadly, I haven't been able to encounter one. So I'll put some links to some different YouTube videos down in the description below so that if you want to check these out for yourselves, you can. While I really haven't had any luck finding any flying squid, unfortunately, I think that the servers need to have lag before they'll get produced, so what's that? That looks like a f jiggling black line. <laughs> uh, let's have a closer look at this. I think it might be something to do with a floating sand block, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, okay. Jiggly sand blocks. Well, that's a new one on me. As I was digging around this area, I saw a few more of these strange sand blocks, so I decided to dig out a big pit here so that we could take a closer look at what's going on. And I'm not even exactly sure what's going on. I can walk on these blocks, so they do technically exist, but I can also break them and they're still there. My instinct tells me that this is just a client server discrepancy thing and that these blocks are probably not even really here, but it is a fun quirk of multiplayer Minecraft. Here's another peculiar one. Players around this time when Minecraft Beta 1.2 was released were also noticing this phenomenon of mobs appearing and disappearing in peaceful mode. Notch referred to this as ghosts because he says he fixed it in the next version, 1.2 underscore 01, and he said, no more ghosts at night. He wasn't really clear in those notes what he meant, but it seems pretty clear that this is what it was. Let's take a closer look at what's going on here. I've zoomed in the footage here and brightened things up a little bit so we can get a general idea of what's going on. I haven't changed the footage in any way, it hasn't been sped up or anything like that, but it looks like these mobs are just appearing and then disappearing really, really quickly, and that is exactly what they're doing. This world is currently running in peaceful mode, and although I haven't read the game code myself, I imagine what's happening here is that the game is looking for valid spawning spaces for hostile mobs to spawn, finding them because it's dark in this area, and then spawning a mob in, and then a moment later it's realising that the game is actually in peaceful mode and despawning that mob. If you switch the game from hard mode to peaceful mode, all of the hostile mobs will disappear in the world that you're playing. So it stands to reason that there's some sort of logic in the code that says, if you're in peaceful mode, despawn any hostile mobs that happen to be in the world in those loaded chunks at that time. So I guess the problem here is that instead of realising that the peaceful mode is enabled before spawning hostile mobs, hostile mobs are spawning regardless of what game mode you're in, and then cleaning itself up afterwards when it does the check. Definitely a bug, and definitely not the way it was intended to be played. I want to take an even closer look at this, and so I've broken down this video so that it's frame by frame. First, we see that there are no mobs spawned, when suddenly, the game finds a valid spawning space and spawns in these two skeletons. In the next frame, we can see that the skeletons move their head, so this indicates that the skeletons are actually active within the world after they've spawned in. In other words, if a player were to be right next to them, then they could fire their arrows at them. Although, because of the way mob spawning works, these mobs spawn far enough away from the player that the player would never see them by the time they get despawned. In the next frame again, we can see that the skeletons move their heads once more, again indicating that they're active and actually responding to the world around them. And then finally they disappear, 
And this is because the game has detected that the world's in peaceful mode and it's done a mob cleanup and removed any hostile mobs from the world. The rate at which these mobs are spawning in and then disappearing is very problematic and it doesn't really look good in terms of gameplay, so this was a vital bug to be fixed. Time to do some science! Beta 1.2 introduces some changes to tool durability, doubling the durability for wood, stone and iron tools, and giving the diamond tools about 1.5 times its previous durability. This is really useful for mining because before this, I was constantly breaking my diamond picks and having to craft new ones. This isn't the first time durability has been tweaked either, but it is the first time that all of the tool materials got rebalanced. So let's whip out a spreadsheet and take a look at these values. Now, bear in mind that I've obtained these values by reading up on the Minecraft wiki and doing a bit of testing myself, so this information may not be 100% accurate, but it does give a good representation of the changes made over time. When tools were first introduced in InDev, they were added to the game with infinite durability, and then in InDev 2010-0201, they were all given their original set of durability values. But I mean, look at that. 257 durability for a diamond pick? Can you imagine your pick breaking after mining just 257 blocks? The rarity of diamonds in the world made iron the best choice all round during InDev. Even after diamond durability was doubled in 0313, it still wasn't as cost effective as iron. At some point during alpha, although I'm not sure which version, the durability of diamond tools doubled to 1025, and in beta, it's been increased by half that again to 1562. But as you can see, this time all of the other tools, except for gold, also got a durability increase. So why didn't gold get an increase? Well, gold now has a different advantage over the other tools, in that it can mine blocks faster. And we need to put this to the test, because I'm keen to see just how much quicker a gold pick is over, say, a wooden pick or a diamond pickaxe. But even if the gold pick is faster, it still isn't a practical tool, because it will still break after every 33 blocks. Anyway, let's give this a test. Now I'm not really going to put any science into this, I'm just going to mine and see how it feels. I want to start out with this wooden pickaxe here. Let's, uh, let's do some mining. It's about that fast. And can I actually mine iron? I, I can't mine iron, can I, with a wooden pickaxe? So cobblestone is a bit slower, because cobblestone is always a bit slower to mine than actual stone. So it feels about that fast. Let's repeat that same test with the gold. Oh, wow. That's actually a lot quicker than I expected. That feels like a pick with efficiency three on it or something. Oh, so I can immediately see why using the gold pick would actually be advantageous if you needed to dig out a big hole or a big area, but the fact that you can only get 33 per pick makes it horrible. Let's just try that with the diamond pick and compare the final result, really. Yeah, as you can see, the diamond pick isn't too far off the gold. It's probably twice as slow. I'm not sure exactly, but mm, it actually makes me feel like the gold tool would be good if it had the durability, or if it didn't lose durability when you used it or something like that. Still, unfortunately, useless in a practical sense. Well, that was a lot of fun to explore, and I just want to assure you all, because I know how keen you all are to see me upgrade to the next version, that we are very close to doing that now. Beta 1.2 was such a huge update that we had a lot of content to get through. And actually, what's interesting about it is that the next version is Minecraft Beta 1.2 underscore 01, and it was released only one day after Minecraft Beta 1.2. So, for me, I've been playing this version for what seems like weeks now, but in reality, all of the players who were playing around this time would have upgraded to the next version already one day after Beta 1.2 was released. But that's just part of how we play these versions and how this series goes. Thank you everybody for watching and supporting, and if you would like to join my Discord or join up as a Patreon member, there are links to both of those down in the description below. But if not, thank you so much for watching, and leave a comment, subscribe, and like if you want to. I shall see you in the next episode. Until then, this has been Bugman CX. You've been watching Minecraft The Journey. Bye bye!